you have a Turbo LS on Holly and you're trying to figure out how to make it go faster, stick around. I'm going to show you. Alright guys, so welcome back to the channel. Um, in today's video, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a live look uh, at a data log for a Turbo LS. Uh, this is a 370 application and an F-Body. This data log was from last night. I have not yet to look at it. Um, the car, I'll go in and put the time slip so you guys can actually read it with me. So I'll put this time slip over here. All right, so the car went a 125 to the 60 foot. Um, this car is struggling with 60 foot. So that's one thing I want you to talk to you guys about. 60 foot is extremely critical when you're trying to get your car to go fast. So in the video that I'll, I'll go in and post up, um, I'll just have it kind of over here off to the side. That way we can discuss at the same time. You'll notice that in the 60 foot, the car, say, say this hand is the tire. The car is actually squatting down on the tire and the tire is actually kind of raising up into the body and that's unloading the tire. Um, he is having to make some bar changes and he doesn't have enough uh, enough adjustment to actually get the bars correctly. But what you want is in a radial car, you want the tire to actually drive into the ground and you want the body to lift off of it. So you'll notice that his, his tire is not actually, uh, or the body is not separating off the car. It's actually getting closer down to the tire. So this car, we definitely gonna have still have some 60 foot changes we need to make. But anyway, so we went a 125, 60 foot. We went 3.382 to the 330, which is not terrible. Uh, obviously it could be better, but it's not terrible. Eighth mile is a 512 with an eight, which again is not terrible. This car should be in the fours by now. But again, it's only, it's not there because of the 60 foot. Um, it trapped 141 miles an hour, which is pretty decent. Um, again, with the 60 foot, we aren't able to feed the power in as fast as what we should be able to. Um, so we should be able to get, we should be able to pick this car up another at least five or six mile an hour in the eighth. Um, so then we go to a thousand foot is 6.63 with an eight. Uh, an ET is 7.91 with a five mile per hour is 177 miles an hour. So first off, what I want you guys to look at is your mile per hour difference between the eighth mile to the quarter mile. Uh, traditionally, if you were optimizing um, your short track game and you don't have a lockup converter, you should be seeing a 30 to 35 mile an hour increase from the eighth mile to the quarter mile. If you see it more than that, that usually means there's more mile per hour that you could put into the eighth mile. Um, so that, that's one of the things that we're going to look at. Uh, but what I'm going to do is we're going to pull up his data log. Again, I have not looked at this thing. We're going to look at this together. I want you guys to look at what I can see. Um, and the suggestions that I'm going to make as far as his adjustments, and then I'll make some minor tweaks if, if needed. Um, this car is on a Terminator X, so it's going to cover uh, or be a lot like, you know, very similar combination to what you guys may have. So the only unfortunate thing is right now we do not have a G meter. We do not have a drive shaft sensor, so we can't optimize it hundred percent using the ECU's data. So realistically, I'm just looking at a more raw kind of data log where we're just going to be looking at target dome. We're going to look at closed loop fueling. We're going to look at some timing. We're going to look at manifold air temp, things like that. So let's go ahead and get this data log pulled up. So to do that, you're going to come up here to the top left and you're going to click data log and you're going to click the drop down and you're going to open data log. All right, so once that pops up, you're just going to open up the latest data log or whichever data log you want to look at. Obviously, mine is going to be the one that I downloaded uh, just a few minutes ago. So we're going to double click this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my drag race uh, section. So this is where my channels are for drag racing. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to set zero time, um, which is going to give us the time in the run. So there is two ways of doing this. You have an automatic function and you have a... Uh, normal like just regular functions you can do manually so we'll, in this video we'll just do it manually um, so I'm going to you can click on the data log and you can highlight it like that and that will um, obviously zoom in and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set zero time to the trans break so if you see this purple line right here this purple line that is the trans break and if you see when I when I arrow over you'll see where the green light is on and then when I arrow back over you'll see where it's off so this is where we're going to set our zero time. So you just click the Z up here and just hit yes. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a, our time function down at the bottom is going to be based off of um, when he released the trans break to actually be able to, we can look at our time into the run and compare it to our time slip and figure out where we need to make changes. So I'm going to zoom back in and let's look at this thing. All right. So first thing let's, let's do is let's see where he's at on the break. So on the break, um, we are, um, 
looks like it's hovering right around 3750 or so 3760 on the brake um, we are at 2.9 pounds of boost so every time he's tried to add his own boost the car would just knock the tires off immediately so one thing you guys have to understand is when you're working with your suspension when you let off the trans brake that initial rotation i mean initial is going to be based off of your tune-up it's going to be based off of your rpm it's going to be based off your torque converter it's going to be based off of how much boost you're commanding that is not necessarily a suspension change that needs to be made um, because the suspension hasn't even had a chance to react just yet so i mean pretty much as soon as your tires get like just a partial rotation in that's when you go into suspension um, so as we're as he releases the button you'll see rpm comes up boost is starting to come up um, so as we're creeping through here, you'll see we're at seven pounds, eight pounds, 10 pounds, 11 pounds, 12 pounds. I mean, it's coming up pretty good. So at this point in the run, everything's looking okay. So this specific car, again, because of the suspension, we were having wheelie issues. So if you'll notice where RPM is coming up and the RPM starts to come down, this is a, a function of two different things. This is a function of the torque converter and it's also a function of I'm pulling timing right here pretty aggressively because he was having issues no matter what suspension adjustment they made. They just ran out of adjustment essentially, but the car just kept coming up right here and he was lifting off the throttle. So I'd see TPS drop all the way down to like 30%. He'd pedal it and he'd come back in. Well, that's going to slow the car down. It's going to drop boost. The car's not going not to be as happy. So the best way to make an adjustment right here is going to be to make an immediate change. And the only way we can make an immediate change without hindering boost is going to be let's do a timing retard. So I'll pull up in the tune and show you the timing retard function. Um, so we're going to go under spark and we're going to go under launch retard. So you'll see right here, you'll see how my timing retard, uh, it starts at activate at input release. Um, you can take this function. If you act, if you enable this, um, you'll go into your pin map right here and you will drag this. It'll pop up right here and you'll drag it down to like, you'll see where launch retard is right here. You'll drag it down where your trans brake button is. Um, so I've got the axis set up to time. And you'll see where we kind of aggressively ramp out the timing and then we feed it back in over time at a, at a little bit slower rate. That way we don't shock the tires. Um, so this is what I had to do on his car to get it to where he was no longer lifting. So it does cause the engine to pull down a little bit as the torque converter is starting to couple. Um, so as we come through here, closed loop fuel correction is okay. Fuel pressure is good. Um, boost is coming up. Um, as we're getting more into the past, you'll see closed loop corrections coming up a little bit. So we're a little bit off. And this is one thing I want you guys to understand. I could probably make a closed loop fuel correction right here and it may would solve this for a day or so. Holly doesn't have enough tables for injector data. So you're never really going to be able to get this 100% perfect on every single pass. And I'll show you why. So if you go into back into your tune file and you go to... Um, your system ICF and pull up your fuel injector information. You'll notice how the injector off time is a is a 2D table. Realistically, injector off time needs to be a 3D table um, because we also need to factor in manifold pressure because manifold pressure is going to directly change the injector off time. Um, if you'll notice, if you pull up any HP tuners file or EFI live file and you look up the factory GM table, you'll notice that it is voltage and manifold air pressure based. I really wish Holly would change this. Um, but because of this, we can't input in and have our perfect injector data. So we can't expect the tune-up to be flawless every single time. As long as we're, we're chasing our target AFR with our actual AFR, we're good. So let's check that. And you'll see this yellow line right here is going to be our target AFR. And you'll see this light blue line is our actual AFR. So if you look across the pass, I mean, you'll see where we're following it pretty much dead nuts on. Um, so as we're rolling through here, first gear, we're up to 31 pounds. You'll see where we're starting to get a little bit of an R, uh, the RPM is starting to curl up. That is actually a nature of the torque converter itself. And we're starting to, basically with effective gear ratio and the amount of torque this engine's producing at 31 pounds of boost, um, we're starting to actually kind of push through the converter just a little bit, nothing crazy. Um, so he comes up to make the shift at, shift is at 7,600 RPM. Um, we are at 32 pounds of boost. We're at 12.9 degrees of timing. Now timing, um, if you're looking at this log, please don't try to duplicate this timing number with your specific application. This is application specific. This car is a 370. Uh, it's got a reasonable amount of compression in it, but it's also on Ignite E90. Uh, and we have good intake uh, manifold air temp. So everything is working in our favor to where we can have this amount of timing. Some guys may look at this and say, hey, it's soft. 
you may be right but we just kind of do quick plug chops and i want his tune-up to be somewhat still conservative because this car is stock block um, it is not firing or anything like that this car has a, a traditional ls9 gasket with a traditional arp stud um, so i'm not scared of boost but i want to make sure that the tune-up isn't on the ragged edge as i've talked about in other videos tune-up is critical but you actually go make power and go fast with mechanical parts and your tune-up is just to try to make the parts work together correctly um, so anyways he makes a shift at 7600 so we're gonna look at rpm drop um rpm drop is i mean it's we got about a 900 rpm drop so we're dropped down to 6700 so on a three speed car that's I mean, we're starting to get to the point of this converter where it almost needs to be tightened up some um it's nothing terrible i always try to look for 800 to 1000 rpm drop on a three speed car um i usually like it to be a little bit more closer to the thousand rpm drop on a three speed car two speed car is a little bit different um so anyways closed loop corrections four percent so nothing terrible afr is, is tracking right there with target um so we're ripping through second gear we're at 32.2 pounds of boost 12.8 degrees of timing uh manifold air temp is coming up this car is on a traditional air to air intercooler um, so we are getting an increase as we go up through here at this boost level the intercooler we're starting to get to the point where we're pretty much on the edge of this intercooler it's nothing terrible but this is actually one of the reasons why i have him on ignite e90 versus it being on a pumpy 85. so pumpy 85 is very very good fuel usually i'll see it start to have uh lift the cylinder heads right around 35 36 pounds of boost depending on the tune up but that just seems about the threshold where it likes to lift on an ls9 gasket um, that's about the point where the stock cylinder head like the aluminum and the stock cylinder head starts to deflect realistically you'll uh, deflect a cylinder head before you'll actually um, cause a stud to stretch so you guys that are doing these custom age arp 625s at 35 pounds of boost on a stock casting cylinder head your stock casting cylinder head is your limit it is not the stud so please quit putting these super aggressive studs in there i mean honestly just a regular arp 2000 is 100 percent fine if you're on a stock uh, casting cylinder head so if you're wanting to turn these things up aftermarket cylinder head casting is going to be better just for the for the deck uh, surface and the aluminum anyway so we're ripping through here coolant temps good battery voltage is good so battery voltage is one of the most critical things you're going to want to watch on a turbo car this is one of the most overlooked things, but battery voltage is very critical. Obviously, battery voltage is what makes all your electronics work, including your fuel pump. So if you're going through a pass and you, you drop down to 11 and a half volts, um, your fuel pump has now lost fuel flow volume. Um, you've lost power at the ignition coil. Um, everything is not working as, as, as it should. So this car has, I believe, a truck alternator, the 140 amp truck alternator with a pulley that has correct it's a motion race works pulley to correct it for the higher rpm usage that way we don't over rev this alternator um so battery voltage is maintaining good it's nothing perfect but it's good like i love for this car to have a 16 volt battery in it but it doesn't just yet hopefully that'll come soon um but everything looks good closed loop fuel correction up top starts to come back in line we're at zero percent a4 is perfect boost is perfect we rip through actually let's go so he made a 7500 rpm shift um about an 800 rpm drop or so and boost is just cruising through here right at 32 ish pounds of boost um so you'll see um time he lifted was uh 7.80 seconds on the holly um so he may have lifted a touch early or we could just be a little bit off on our zero time um obviously you're gonna have the car's gonna have to twitch a little bit also um so either way data log looks perfect um i don't really see any changes that need to be made i may make a slight change on closed loop fuel just to try to get rid of this uh six percent right here um but for the most part this is just a great looking data log um so that's gonna be the video for today um i may drop another video so if you don't already have your notification bell on please turn it on uh, if you're not already subscribed i hope i've given you enough information to go on and, and earn your subscription i'm doing videos like this every single day so the only day i don't i'm not going to upload is probably like a saturday or sunday or if i'm on vacation um, but tr traditionally during the week i'm going to be uploading videos even if i'm you know i'm going to take a cruise here like next week and i'll probably upload a video of it also um, i'm trying to keep you guys as informed as humanly possible a lot of tuners try to uh, hide this wizardry um, most of the time when they're hiding stuff that just means they don't actually know um, so to me, there's no reason to not let this information be out there. Um, I can share, as I've said in other videos, I could have 2 million subs and have everybody watching the entire videos and 
I'm still going to have plenty of customers that I'm going to be able to, to help. Um, but I want you guys to stay informed um, on really any of this tuning stuff. The best thing to do with your Holly um, or any type of turbo car or HP tuners or anything is going to be for the end user to actually have a way of data logging and be able to look through their own data logs and you work with your tuner to make your car go faster. Um, this is not just a one person job. I can't just be behind this keyboard and keep making this car go faster. Me and, and this customer, we have to work together and make changes and, and make a change that may slow the car down. We have to do this stuff to get the car figured out to give it what it wants. Um, so that's another good thing is, is you always want to give the car what it wants, uh, develop a theory later. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, that is a, just an overlook of what a seven second data log looks like from start to finish. If you guys have any questions, drop me a comment down below and I will see you guys later on.